Hello, and welcome to this session of Microsoft Excel. First off, my name is Kyle Pugh. Now, during this session, I'm going to walk you through a relatively newer function inside of Excel called the text join function. Now, I'm sure some of you are familiar with functions like the concatenate function, the concat function, or utilizing the ampersand to combine multiple text values into one value. You ever done that before? You ever have a list of records where you then individual columns, you want to take them and merge them all into one value. Well, the concatenate or the concant function, just kind of just the newer version of it, I'll do that for you. It allows you to take multiple text values and combine them into one value. Okay? We can utilize kind of the shorthand or the ampersand character to do very much the same thing. Let me just give you a quick preview here. I'm going to hop over just to an empty spot inside of my, my worksheet here. I'm going to get my head out of the way. Let's make it a little smaller. All right, there we go. So over here on the right-hand side, I'm just going to drop in a value. Let's just say, hello. And inside of another cell, I'm going to say, world. Hello, world. Now here, I want to take those two values and combine them into one value. Well, I'm going to say equals, and I'm going to bring out the con cat function. Now you notice that there's one called concatenate, func uh, concatenate function and then the concat function. The uh, concatenate function, it's kind of old school. It's been deprecated. It's still available for us to utilize, um, but they've introduced the concat function to replace that one. But essentially they do very much the same. So I'm going to grab the first one there. I'm going to open up the argument window just so we have more of a visual here. So now I can just say for text one, I want hello. For text two, I do want world, but I want to separate them. And I'm going to separate them by a space. So instead of text two, I'm going to open up a quote, hit space, close the quote, just so I have a literal space in there. Text three, I'll grab world, and I'm going to hit OK. So there's my new value based on those two, just combining those two together. Okay, concat the concatenate function, or utilize the ampersand character to really do that as well. Well, in steps the text join function, and it's going to do something very similar here, but it's going to have a couple of huge advantages over that right there. Let's take a look at it. So the text join function, it's really got three, and with some optional, it's got three required arguments or parameters that we need. First thing it wants to know is what's the delimiter? How are you going to separate the values that you want to combine? So imagine you've got a column of data, a bunch of names maybe. Now I want to take all those names and put them into one value. Well, how do you want to separate those names? Maybe a comma, maybe uh, a space, maybe a hyphen, a slash, right? We get to pick the delimiter. How do you want to separate those names? Next thing it wants to know is whether or not you want to ignore the empty cells. Well, again, You've got that big column of names. Maybe there's some empty cells within that list. Do you want to include those empty cells so you actually see them in the list? It could be like Fred, George, Harry, da -da 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 -da, space, no, no name, and then continue the names. Right? Do you want to show that or not? You have the option true or false. And then the text. What is it that you want to join together? Now with the text join function, you can specify one text reference, could be a column of cells. You can specify multiple text references. It could be multiple columns, multiple rows, and we can combine it all into one list. Now the benefits over utilizing something like the concat function or the ampersand, we can specify a whole range of cells and specify the delimiter once. Say, hey, take from A1 to A20,000, join them all together, separate them by comma, done. Utilizing something like that concat function, we would have to specify each cell and the delimiter that you want to separate each with. So let's see some examples here. So I'm going to jump to my next sheet here. Simple text join, start out really simple, and then we'll jump out to some more advanced techniques. Now really, I'm showing off this video and this, this function here because I got a question inside of my Excel course. And we're going to see the example that this student uh, gave to me and I thought, well, how can we do this? And the text join is what jumped into my head. And we'll take a look at that here in a moment. 
So here I've got, it's a simple list just for the example here. It's got two, two addresses and names and birth dates here. So imagine this, somebody gives you a list with 20,000 names, addresses, birth dates, maybe they're customers or whatever. And they say, hey, I want a list of just the name and the, and the birth date. That's it. That's all I need. All right, great. So there's perhaps multiple techniques that we can use here. Here's how you would use the text join. So I'm going to jump into J4. And I'm just going to start to type this out. It's a function equals text join. There it is. I'll hit my tab key to accept it. And just to make it more visual, I'm going to hit the FX button just to open up the argument window so we can work here. So the first thing, what's the delimiter? How are you going to separate the name from the birthday? All right. The delimiter, I'm going to say I'm going to do, let's do a quote, space, uh, excuse me, comma, space, close quote. So it'll be something like George, comma, space, and then the birth date. I'm going to ignore the empties. I don't have any empties, but I'm going to ignore them. So I'll say true. And then for text one, I'll grab George or cell B4. And then I'm going to go to text two, and I'm going to grab G4, the birth date for George. Now, if you look really closely, remember this is a text join function. It's going to join text values to one another. Well, now if we look, G4, it no longer looks like a date. It's that underlining number that all dates have, properly formatted dates have within Excel. So I don't want that. I don't want to say George 31,048. I need it to say George January 1st, 1985. Well, here inside of text two, just like all other functions, we can nest additional functions in here. So I'm going to bring in the text function open up the parentheses. I'm going to say, hey, text function, take the contents of cell G4, comma, and I want you to format it. We'll do, uh, we'll do month and year. I don't care about the date. I just want to know the month and year of their birth. So I'll say MMM hyphen YYYY, close the print or close the quotes, close the parentheses, and there looks much better. George, January, 1985. If you want to include the day in there, you're going to use D's. So I can come up here and I can say, I want to include the day. So I'll say DD hyphen. And now we got January 01, 1985. All right, good. I'll hit OK. And I've now combined those two with the comma and a space and properly formatted the date. Let's just drag that down, autofill it. And there's Fred, April 16th. Oof, today's the 9th, 1981. It's almost Fred's birthday. All right. So there's just a simple example. That's even something we could do with something like the concant function or the ampersand. So let's take this a step further. I'm gonna jump down here to the text join function with delimiter. Now this is where it really gets exciting. This is cool. This is, this is cool. All right, so another simple list. Here, I've got their name and their address. That birth date's gone. So what I wanna do is get a nice address block. Right, something you would use inside of like a mail merge, right? Creating mailing labels or just a list of addresses. Well, right now it's all individual columns. Let's get it formatted nicely here. All right, so I'm going to jump into H3. Again, text join equals text join. There we have it. I'll open up the FX window. It's much more visual. All right, delimiter. Now we can specify the delimiter, the literal delimiter right here. So I could do something like, I just want to separate them by a space. So I'll do quote, space, close quote. We'll do empty. I want to ignore them. True. And then for my text, let's just go grab C3 to G3. All right, that's it. If we look closely here, there's George space, 13 Pine Avenue, space, Salt Lake City, yada, yada, yada. I'm going to hit OK here. And let's just see it right there. There it is. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to drag it down just yet, just yet. Let's take this a step further. So I'm going to double click on here, open that back up. So I was using a literal space, right? Just quote, space, quote, that's my delimiter. Watch this. I'm going to get rid of that. And instead of that, I'm going to reference a cell. And I'm going to put it right underneath the C column here. I'm going to click into there. I'm going to hit my enter key. Now, right now, it's just, now it's just all smashed together. Whoop, George 13 Pine Street, blah, blah, blah. blah right? Just smashed together. Well, here's my delimiter now. There's nothing in it. And that's why it's all smashed together. 
Well, if I do this, if I hit my space bar now instead of cell C5, space, enter, now they're all separated by space. Let's take that again. Jump in there, I'll delete out the space. Now they're all smashed. I'll do a hyphen, enter, and now they're all separated by a hyphen. All right, this is just getting good. All right, I'm gonna delete that out once again. Watch this, watch this. I'm gonna increase the height of that row. So I want this to look more like a proper address block. I want it to be George and then wrap down a line and then give me the street address, all right? So take a look. I'm gonna double click on the delimiter cell C5 here just to get in there so I can edit the contents of that cell. Now on my keyboard, if I wanna create a wrapping line, a new line inside of a cell, I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and press Enter, Alt, Enter. You can see my cursor drop down into a, a line there. Now I'll hit my it, just normal enter key, just the enter key. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Let's expand that a little more. So now George is up on its own line. Now everything else is on its own line as well, right? Because the delimiter, the only cell that I specified there, told it to put them all on their own line. Well, I wanna get this to be more like an address, right? It should be George, 13 Pine Avenue, Salt Lake City, comma, space, Utah, space, and then the zip code, all right? All right, so I'm gonna go back to my formula. We, or I, specified one cell as the delimiter, just C5, so now it's everybody's using that same thing. Well, I'm gonna come over here. I don't want just C5, but I'm gonna grab all of these cells down here. It's in my enter key. All right, now, George, right below that C5, told George to create a new line. That's how we're gonna separate it. George, new line. Oh, what's happening here? 13 Pine, oh, there's nothing separating Avenue in Salt Lake City. Well, let's come over to D5, right below the address. I'm gonna double click, Alt, Enter, hit my Enter key, and now I've wrapped the line. Let's come over here right below City, and I want this one to be a comma and a space. I'll hit my Enter key, look at that, comma, space. And then for the last one, I just want a space between the state and the zip. So I'll hit my space bar, enter, and there's my space. Huge, 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 huge. Let's get that wrapped around. Oh, you know what? Let's undo that for a moment. I'm gonna make a change here. I need the, of the original formula, I need C3 through G3 to be absolute. So I'll highlight that F4 on my keyboard, got the dollar signs. Now let's drag that down and I'm going to Expand that, and it's on. Let's see what's happening with my formula there. Let's see, C, oh, excuse me. My bad, my bad, I'm looking at it like, what is going on, I'm going crazy. These aren't absolute here. Those are the cells that I wanna combine, so let's get rid of those. This is what I wanna combine, those are my delimiters. All right, you're welcome for that example. All right, now let's drag that down. Pause the video, rewind that, whatever you need to do. But we need the delimiters to be the absolutes and the text to be a relative reference there. Now I can drag it down and autofill that. I think this is, this is huge, this is great. Dynamic delimiters now, based on your values and your lists. All right, try that one out. Let's try one more together. I'm gonna jump over to this text join with an if. Now I mentioned earlier that I, I'm bringing up this video because it is in relation to a question that a student had. So here they had a list of colors. These represent t-shirt colors. And then you got women's shirts and you got men's shirts here. And they wanted to gather, well, which colors were chosen? Now, essentially I wanna get a list of all the colors where there's a Y. So I'm gonna hop over here to C15. I'm gonna use the text join once again, text join. Now for my delimiter, I'm gonna use a semicolon. All right, there's my delimiter. Comma, I'm gonna ignore empty spaces, great. Now for my lists, here's where it's gonna get a bit different. Let's open up the argument window here. So I got my delimiter, I'm gonna ignore the empties, but for my text, I wanna get the Ys, but I only wanna get the Y, or excuse me, I want to get the colors, but I only want to get the colors where it's a Y. Okay. 
So now there's a condition involved on the text that we want to combine, that we want to join together. So for my text, I'm going to bring in the if, and I'm going to say if this column here is equal to y, y is inside of quotes. So if that is true, then comma, I'm going to grab the colors. If it's not true, not true, then I'm going to return nothing. I'll just do two quotes, smash together. I'm going to return nothing. Close that if statement. All right, let's see here. If this, if this right here is equal to Y, then give me the colors. All right. So I'm going to change here. I'm going to grab B3 to B14. I'm going to make that absolute F4 because eventually I'm going to copy this over for men's as well. I'm going to hit OK. And there we have it. So red, yellow, black, white, red, yellow, black, white. We've combined them all together if this is Y. Let's just drag that over, autofill over. All right, red, green, yellow, orange, brown. Red, green, yellow, orange, brown. Done. Okay, huge. This is the text join function and nesting an if within there. Now there was a bit moving inside there, but once again, this is an answer to a question that I got from a student inside my Excel course. So hopefully that can be uh, an advantage for you as well. Take a look at the, the text joint. How can you use it? I've given you one more example. I'm going to leave this one up to you. I'm missing the hockey season. Uh, they've postponed it because of what we're going through right now. But uh, hopefully everybody's safe and healthy. And I appreciate you watching this video. If you haven't already, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you can get some updates about future videos. Appreciate you watching the video.